it kind of blends in. So I want my wrench in like I said. I don't even remember how I got got these on here. What up everybody? So back working on the white truck. Uh was hoping to go racing this weekend and or sorry, this next weekend. Event got canceled. So work I've been putting in the truck. Uh, pretty worthless at this point, but we got Wooster 300 coming up. Um, buddy of mine that's pretty local, and it's not too far from here. So we're going to plan for that for the 19th, I think it is, if my date's right. So just going to do a little bit on the truck tonight. I um, also bought this Proform um, valve lashing tool to help me out. I got to get the valves lashed. That won't be on this video, but it'll be on an upcoming video. And my shoulder's been pretty fucked up. So I went to the uh, doctor for that here this week. They got me on steroids. Um, certain positions in my arm, man, it's, it's killing me. It's a dull pain all the time. I've just been dealing with it. I've been working with it. And today was the first day of medication. So um, I'm going to go ahead. We're going to rip these stupid dune flag things off. And because uh, I'm always almost hitting my knee on them. And, they're just ugly and I don't need to use them. So let's get to it. The existing holes because I got all this going on. And then when I did my um, body lift on this truck, I cut my brackets off and actually raised them up to get my bumper to work. So on these S10s, they don't, the mounts are welded to the frame so you can't just put um, a bracket on there to lift it up. So everything's custom made. So and then I just welded a cap on the front, so it kind of blends in. So I want my wrench in like I said. I don't even remember how I got, got these on here. I might not be able to get them on. Oh boy. If I can't get them off, it's not gonna be good. That might be one. Usually, probably because I painted them and it's got a little bit of dirt, usually you can just bump them and they come right off. But I guess that's not the case. Let's see if we can get this other one. can't see it too so interesting Just cut me off then because I 
perks of building your own stupid ship. Right here, perfect example. we'll jump to jump to this side let's see if we can get these ones off probably be the same story since they're starting to rust yeah see that's what they're supposed to do right there yeah that. two out of three is not bad These are just some brackets I found up real quick. Yeah. <clears throat> I just made them out of, I made these flat bar, or I cut this flat bar, drilled it, and it wasn't rigid enough, so. So I just welded some. Two inch uh, flat flat bar to it. It's rusted right in there. Alright, we just gotta knock those out. I don't remember. I don't remember how I got those in there. Thought I register there. I do have this, uh, this uh, I think it worked the camera. I got this badass magnet. ones jump back over here oh we're not ready to go We'll do this like the, the old days. Right. 
Yeah, those ones are locked up there. I'm just gonna cut them. forget to squint your eyes. And then cut it all the way, all the way through. Oh, I didn't get it halfway. Usually I give them enough, I can just turn them and cut them one more time. And you can hit them. And just a... Maybe I didn't get that one enough either. Usually I get them cut halfway and then they just pop off. Oh, maybe I can't. Oh, yeah, I can reach it in this one. Directions, everything. Don't run these backwards. I run a spacer because my my aluminum my Mickey Thompson wheels there. 
They're a thicker wheel. So what happens is, when you put the steel on, the steel is a lot thinner, and then it hits the shoulder. It doesn't tighten down all the way. And then I just run these um, I gotta put some annexes on these because I haven't put any annexes on them in a while. Some of these I run annexes, but these I'll I'll run the uh, ultra torque because that annexes that I use I don't run the copper. So what happens is. You start running that nickel stuff. It gets pulled out, whatever. You try to change these tires if it's like, you know, say I come out to the shop and uh, I want to change these. Well, that nickel actually likes to freeze up and it will take your threads off. I don't care who argues with me. I've done it. I'm not doing it again. So, because I run these steel ones, these uncoated um, steel ones. I like to run that every every now and then. This side's a lot tighter. Got my other truck in here. Let's put away for winter. These are a 35, 12, 5, 15. The paddle tires I'm putting on, they're actually about 30 inches tall. And then if you factor in the paddle, which is your tread, those are 32. I don't know how much I blocked you, but. Like I said, it's real tight. I hope this wheel comes off because I can't move it. Like I said here, I like to run this, this ultra torque on here. Just run those cheap spacers. It's not steel, it's just a cast aluminum. Works great for what I'm doing. Someday I need to, probably after I get the Ford 9 inch in there, I need to uh, set it up for aluminum wheel. Now, because this is a spool, full spool in the back, um, I want to make sure, I don't have many options for this, but I want to make sure my tire is about where the same on the opposite side. <clears throat> I don't really care where the valve stem is at. I do care where the, where the pack is gonna be. It's pretty close. My opening is up here, up here on the top. I know you can't see it, but I also don't recommend these tires for your vehicle. The reason I run these is because they're cheap. And if you've ever owned a truck like this, the back ends tend to be really weak. And the amount of horsepower I'm putting down doesn't really affect me too much. So. I like to just get these snug. I get them snug lined up. Because I got one of these I drilled out. Five eighths to try to get that. Let's try to get. 
get that shoulder and uh, I ended up just buying the spacers back to what I was saying um, with that trucks the trucks 500 horse on the dyno you know you subtract all your transmission and your gear ratio and extra load I only run these those because they're cheap and the paddles aren't that deep um, you start getting a lot more horsepower you get more um, you get more paddles on the actual tire you will rip them right off so the difference between a paddle tire like I got right there and your higher horsepower applications the one I have is I don't know the correct term but it's a molded tire that's the way it it was molded I mean just like this tire before the cuts it already has a tread on it when it comes out of the mold um, these other power uh, higher horsepower they're just a drag slick and you just glue the paddle on so you can get custom ones whatever you can get Kevlar and they rip off. Where these ones, they may rip off, but they're molded in, so they're a little bit stronger. And I'm not slinging a bunch of horsepower. So. See how much pressure we got. This one's pretty low. Hasn't had any air since I think July was the last time we run the truck. Yeah. It's Got about five pounds. It was, <clears throat> July was, I think, the last time I the truck in the dirt. And that was, that was the day we actually won. I forget what the ply of this is. So you always have a chance for flats, but I think this is a 15 PSI. Um, look here in a second. Yeah, there's still ain't any air in it. It says, do not inflate more than 36 while seating. I thought it said 50. Not 10 PSI. Pretty cold out today, so we'll stick exactly 10 in there. Same thing here. Let's get this one off. This one's usually pretty good. It's pretty seated, but... Yeah, we're about 8. in there we got about uh just under half a tank of fuel right now so plus it's gonna look like it's squat now we're right on that paddle so it's gonna look like it's a flat spot now i didn't show you guys when i was taking the mufflers off but i do some checking back here and this is my this is my uh, DIY sway bar. That's some half inch plate. Um, just a one inch um, piece of bar stock for shaft material. I drilled holes in it and then put that bar on farther down and then put some uh, pill block bearings on there. And then I bought some of these um, adjustable sway bar links for a Chevy Silverado. And then down here on your, uh, uh, I can't think what you call it, but on the S10, these are actually on the bottom because your axle sits up here. I just flipped mine, and uh, this is a IH Scout axle. 
I flipped the spring perches here and then I run a lowering shock here because I'm closer to the frame and then I just drilled an extra hole here and pretty much that's my sway bar and it doesn't it's not gonna last forever but it does the job it made one hell of a difference first few times around the truck but I've had this happen before and I saw it the other day and this nut this nut here actually come loose and I gotta get that tightened up so this don't fall off because if this falls off then the truck doesn't launch right so I gotta grab a wrench here's a better look at that so this is just a 14 There's no, uh, no lock wash or anything that came with these. It just has a bigger nut with, uh, it's kind of a, it's not a lock nut. It's one that's got the little teeth on there. Maybe it's a lock nut. Lock, it's not a lock nut. It's a, yeah, I can't even call it. Anyway, we'll go ahead and check the top. Yeah, I can't even get on the top. I'm gonna bring you guys right over. Sorry if you're watching this at night. Probably just blinded you. Oh yeah, those ones are tight. Tight fit back here, boy. This one was the one that was really tight. I can't get the box tend on there. That one's tight. I'm gonna have to slide you down here. All right, folks, this is where we're at. <clears throat> I'm going to go ahead and pull. I got to get this um, valve cover off, the other valve cover off. And I bought this Proform. And the valve lash tool helped me out because I got to stand on this tire. My knees are about here. And I got to lean over on this thing because I'm too short to get to the back and your arm is over here all the time so i bought this hoping this would help me and uh it should also make everything a little cleaner because i'm always touching the allen wrench and shit and then i get oil everywhere it's not perfect under here i've never claimed it to be perfect but i do clean it up every now and then i got some oil over there from touching shit and oil there touching stuff and uh truck's just dirty but i gotta get that pulled i want to check if i got time i want to check both bowls make sure they're good because man they just they don't it's, just, it's not fucking happy when you put it to the floor on the expressway as soon as that four barrel kicks in it just <clears throat> and then it comes back and it's i had that taken care of back when I put the bigger discharge nozzles in there. So 